Outdoor Audio Systems How you doing? I'm Seth. I'm Will. We're here today to talk about outdoor audio. It's, uh, it's summertime almost. I was going to say insert the, the Will Smith song, Summertime, but uh, that's, that's too soon. Yeah, uh, one more month. Okay, one month, kick summertime in. will kick in. But it's time for flip-flops, it's time for football, it's time for check this out. The old dermatologist, look at this action. Ouch. So definitely wear hats, wear your sunscreen, kiddos. Yeah, yeah. cake and, it on. Uh, I think my dermatologist though is pretty happy. She gets to buy another yacht with all the work and yeah. melanoma. She'll be cutting out of this head of mine, but <laughs> she, she'll, she'll, she'll be enjoying summertime. Part of the deal. Might as well laugh instead of cry. You yeah. Know? So, but uh, hey, not too bad. But so, anyways, um, there's a bunch of different outdoor speakers that are out there. There's a bunch of uh, forms of amplification that people need to know about. There is. There's a bunch of standards as well that are important to know. So there's no uh oh kick me factor. So. Um, we're kind of just going for the gusto here. We have not rehearsed at all, so we're just going to spout and see how it goes. Let's yeah. talk. Let's talk some outdoor audio. Let's so, do it. Let's jump into it. First type of speaker. This kind of form factor has been around forever. Oh yeah. Nondescript black or white box. Yep. But uh, it does the job. It does the job. It's as textbook as an outdoor speaker can get. Yep. Outdoor speaker. Got your mount on the back. These things can be mounted vertically. Or a lot of times you'll want to do it horizontally so you can point speaker down, not get your neighbors all bent out of shape. Yeah. Um, we've also done a bunch of these on stakes. So we want them around a yard. We do a little landscape stake that goes in the back. Here is a picture that will, will pop up here that shows what it looks like on a landscape stake. And that we do that for uh, cost-effective reasons if you have a certain budget, right? If you don't want to get into a hardcore speaker array of satellites or speakers in the ground we we do those on the stakes yeah yeah um, normally you'll find these things will go anywhere from about a five inch driver to an eight inch driver bigger is always better when it comes to sound quality so we've seen a number of uh, articles that'll be like best of outdoor speaker we actually did a couple of those we did a best of 2020 and a best of 2021 sometimes we'll read it and we're like okay are you kidding me there might be like a little like three inch speaker hundred dollars a pair best of and and they're gonna sound horrible because with speakers bigger is always better in almost every single case especially with outdoor speakers where the acoustic situation is a lot different than you have inside oh yeah so um, that actually brings up one consideration with any sort of outdoor speaker and especially if you're doing them on stakes it's always best to have some sort of surface behind it like if you can have it like or a retaining wall is right behind it against the house. That gives you a lot more uh, base impact and reinforcement from that wall, where if you have them in space, they can sound kind of thin. So yeah. Um, gets also one thing is if you can mount these in a corner. So let's say, and of course you can't see the corner of our room over here, but if you have these things closer to a corner, you're gonna get base reinforcement off of this wall and off of this wall. So it'll give you more punchiness out of the speaker. So. That's some uh, some speaker stuff here. We uh, we'll put a uh, link in the description of our best of 2020 and 2021. We had done uh, reviews of Monitor Audio, Martin Logan, URC Klipsch uh, episode. I think those were the five, and we had where Monitor Audio came out on top. Martin Logan was a close second. The other ones kind of kick in from there, but. In that article, we talk about kind of, you know, what we heard and pros and cons and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And to piggyback off of the speaker location, sometimes backyard setups or outdoor setups, you have no option. You're, you're going to take what we're given when we're doing the install, meaning there's only specific locations where we can run the wire to. Because yep. there's either concrete in the way or your whole, set, your whole backyard setup, if it was already built, then it would need to be retrofitted. There's some cases where you can cut out concrete, but then you're getting into a whole different level of backyard yeah. um, customization. Yep, we'll put in our uh, links as well. Like we found a guy who did a great job cutting tile and concrete. I didn't even yeah. know it was possible. I'm like, oh, no problem, knocked it out. We'll put a link to that as well. That was really cool. That opened up a lot of options. Yeah, and he did a super clean job. It was right in front of their tennis court. This, uh, this client was super into tennis and and they're like the, the it um, home in that community with tennis so everyone went over there to play tennis and they wanted to have the kick-ass outdoor setup yeah, yeah. That, that turned out really nice it did and actually we used our r2d2 friend here we'll talk about him in a minute but uh we used those out there and they sounded yeah. fantastic so uh the next format that is very popular a form factor are these guys 
Kind of looks like a megaphone, you know. Hello. Yeah. But uh, Start doing doesn't some... doesn't work as a megaphone, but no. does work as a great speaker. Yeah. Uh, these guys will come in various sizes. They go anywhere from like the four and six inch are kind of the standard sizes that you'll see, and then there are also some eight inch models that are out there. These will have some form of landscape stake, but these can also be modified. We've done these uh, fences over our client Barb's. Yep, where there's things are on the fence. I'm yelling over here at Mark. Um, we've had some of these we've attached to trees, which yeah. is kind of cool. Um, or you just put them in landscape stakes, and here's a picture of that, along with our uh, in-ground subwoofer as well. But so you throw these things around. These also have what's called a tap on the back of this. So you unscrew it. It's kind of like a volume control you yeah. can think of it of. And so these things, you can kind of tailor them to your yard. So for example, if I had some of these right next to the jacuzzi, jacuzzi is loud, so you might want it to be a little bit louder. Then in that same path of wire, you might have like the job we did a little while ago out in Hamul. Yeah. Um, there was a sitting area that the speaker was like three feet away from it and there's no noise around. So that one we'd want turned down a little bit. So the nice thing about these is you can have a whole line of these speakers and kind of tailor the volume in each area as you need without having to turn volume up or down or anything. Yeah. Um, these also kind of work in conjunction. You can use them with or without, but with uh, this <laughs> monster, and this is actually one of the smaller monsters. Some of these things are just gigantic, but uh, old mushroom head here, this guy is what sticks above the ground. This guy gets buried. So you bury this thing. This is an in-ground subwoofer. Our ears don't really pick up that bass is coming from here, and our highs and mids are coming from your megaphone. Um, but they sound fantastic. They do, and we just installed one of those. You're paying a little premium for the, for the Martin Logan brand. Not just the brand, but the quality and what your ears hear. We've done episode ones, above ground ones, that sounded muddled. It was still bass, it's better than no bass. But that one, I don't know if our client just hit the lottery for their backyard, but the bass was solid and tight throughout their whole patio. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah, and we actually, we had a comment on our YouTube page today, biased and misleading. That was about another source. Now, the person didn't say what biased and misleading was about, but um, we are very neutral when it comes to what we hear and that sort of thing. If something's bad, we'll take the URC uh, standard speakers. URC came out with a speaker, the standard box that we showed you initially. We thought they sounded horrible. And we put that in the review that we put a link to. So if something's bad, we'll tell you it's bad. If something's good, we'll tell you it's good. We love the sound of the Martin Logan satellites. They just sound really detailed, real clean. Um, one benefit of this type of landscape system is let's say a large yard. Uh, we have a client of ours, Sheila, where she's got a backyard that's kind of like a it's kind of like a, a vacation. Yeah. You might hang out back there in the pool, jacuzzi, tennis courts, yeah, the whole nine. Not too shabby. Um, gigantic, gigantic backyard. You wouldn't call it a backyard. It's a resort. Yeah. So if you have a resort, it's hard to get sound to cover that whole area. So in that one, we ended up doing eight of these guys, two larger subs, larger than this guy. And then we used a couple R2-D2s in another area. And again, we'll talk about R2-D2 in a second, our favorite droid slash speaker. Um, and it just, it sounds like a high-end hotel or going to Disneyland and listening to tunes or something like that. Yeah, it's seamless. W wherever you walk, the sound just hands off to each speaker perfect. You don't notice any gaps or dead zones. So yeah, like it's the Disneyland setup. <laughs> yeah. There's also a thing to consider is when you're running wire all over the place in a large setting like that. There's some math that's involved because with standard speaker systems, you can only run the wire a certain distance. So for example, this is what's called a 70 volt setup and we'll put a little description of it in our description or link to it in our description. Um, standard speakers typically are what is called an eight ohm resistance and they, they utilize different electronics, a different setup. You have a finite amount of feet that you can run the wire before you get signal loss using eight ohm. And typically it's anywhere between 130 to about 270 feet, and that varies a little bit, but depending on the thickness of the wire and the loss that you get. These type, you can literally run thousands of feet with minimal loss. So like the resort style, there was it was too far to do a standard eight ohm setup, yeah. which is why we opted for these guys. Yeah, resort style, even like uh, big manufacturers that do audio throughout their, their uh, main commercial spot, they have, they're doing the voltage setup, not the ohm setup, because they have literally like, hundreds of speakers throughout throughout their, their commercial space. Yeah, 
Yep. Um, also, we talked about before about uh, how you want to make sure that you've got some sort of surface behind the speakers to help get bass reinforcement. That was the case at our client Sheila's. The one subwoofer was behind this huge wall and the bass was just ridiculous. The other was kind of out in space and it was a little bit thin. So it's just something to keep in mind that if you have the option to, hey, I can have it near this wall, or sometimes you can have like a palm tree, you can have the subwoofer on one side of it and yeah. you'll get refraction off of that tree. Oh, yeah. That's gonna be helpful and give you better sound than just having them in space. It is. Uh, you know what I was just thinking is, how many different names is there for backyard setups? You got pergolas, courtyards, barbecue, patio. <laughs> There's like 20 different names. I was just like, just the, this past summer, since the, the we did a lot of outdoor systems, uh, the, the the whole all the different variations of, of setups that we did they all turned out pretty awesome yeah these last two years have been busy a lot of people at home a lot of people wanting you know a paradise and, yeah, uh, yeah covid we've, covid we've, brought a brought in a new type of uh, mindset for 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 americans <laughs> people out here uh you don't need to be the in the upper echelon to have an outdoor system anymore you could have a jbl speaker start from there to a sonos move up to full array setups with mushroom underground subwoofers and yeah be living like a king with music everywhere there we go should we talk about r2d2 let's do it oh, yeah that beat that. <laughs> oh, that's exactly r2d2 it's, it's pretty close, close. Yeah. it's been a while since i've seen it so r2d2 is kind of the same idea with r2 r2 comes in different colors you can't see them there but we got a gold one over here we got a square one we got black ones this guy goes in the ground you bury it up to here up in R2's mouth here, you got either 180 degrees of dispersion, or if you really want to hear R2 talk, you can talk out the back of his head, 360 degrees yeah. of dispersion. That fills up the area a little bit more, but the sound won't be quite as clean. So it kind of just depends. Like if I had this up against a wall, I might want that 180 degrees. If I had this out in the open, that's where I might want the 360 degrees. Um, these things sound amazing. Now, there are different types of amplifiers that are needed to push these. This option here, it's called the Bollard style, which is like a lighting Bollard, it kind of mirrors that. This is from Origin Acoustics, and they sort of pioneered this, and a bunch of other companies said, hey, that looks great, we're gonna make them too. Um, Origin says, hey, you wanna use our particular type of amplifier for that. And so we have amplifiers from Crown. There's a thousand watt amp that's right here. We got an Origin amp over there, you can't see it. Um, one thing we found interesting is we've been using a lot of the Sonos amp. We can kind of talk about amplification now, I guess, and sources. Yep. Um, this is a nice little solution. It's 700 bucks. Now with inflation, it'll probably be $1,200 in a month, but $700, um, 125 watts by two. Uh, when we had talked to Origin, they said, you can't run it with this. You need <laughs> to use our amp. And we we're on the phone. We said, well, we're actually listening to them right now on our Sonos amp and they sound great. Why can't we use it? And they said, I don't know. Um, so we have used these to push R2-D2 and some of these other solutions. This can be a great option where if you've got a bunch of different areas of audio, hook up this to either one or two pairs of speakers, depending on the particular speakers and resistance and that sort of thing. This guy pushes them and you just use your phone to control everything. Um, we did notice though that um, Origin makes this 2100 watt monster and uh, when we hooked that up to these things, it, they sounded incredible. Ridiculously yeah. loud, crazy bass, crazy sharpness, but you pay a lot more for that amp too, so it's part of the, part yeah. of the dealio. Yeah. Pay more, you should get more performance, you'd hope. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. Um, a lot of our other solutions, like this Martin Logan setup or episode landscape, that's where the Crown manufactured amplifier is very popular, and lots of companies make them and Crown kind of makes them, they put their badge on it and their DSP for the processing that works with their particular speakers. Those come in 1,000, 2,000 and 3,000 watt flavors. 1,000 watt looks like it's going away. That's one of these supply chain things. Yeah, those, um, this, yeah, those are So we are now using the 2,000 watt model for that until the 1,000s come back in stock. But that's been popular. What, uh, what do we need to think about? What are some considerations with all this outdoor stuff, Will? Um, with the, if you're running the crown, you can r run the sub off of one of the channels and then link up the, the, uh, the rest of the speakers, depending on how many you're setting up. You could run those off the other channel. Um, and then with the Sonos amp, you can run a passive sub and then get a, a, get a uh, we did an episode setup, episode subwoofer amp to the subwoofer and then from there into the Sonos amp 
So you had the bass that running the bass side of it and then hooked up the, the speakers to the A and B channel on the, on the Sonos amp. But yeah, yeah. Um, I think we've covered a lot we, of it. We want to hit on um, Wi-Fi. So you got to have great Wi-Fi for these outdoor systems. Part of it is, and we'll take of it Sheila's resort, you were walking there, I don't know what mark, 150 feet or so, probably 50 yards or so, maybe even farther from the house. So, and you want to be out there lounging with your favorite adult beverage 50, 60 yards away and controlling your tunes. If you don't have great Wi-Fi, you can't use your phone to be able to control. You might be using the Sonos brain for this. They have a thing they call the port. You might be using the Denon Heos uh, solution for that. Yamaha Music Cast, they have also a preamp for that. But your phone is going to need uh, adequate Wi-Fi to be able to do that. So you got to have good Wi-Fi. Yeah, so factor in the price of what the Wi-Fi is going to be into your outdoor budget. Uh, TVs are important because um, if you have music, you might as well do a little TV somewhere in there. Keep the kiddos busy or watch the game out there or, I mean, whatever yeah. whatever you have on there. Uh, we've had good experience with the Samsung Terrace. Uh, Sunbright makes one too, but we, we stick with the Samsung. They make a really good... Uh, they make two different versions. They have the full sun and the half sun. They're full array, uh, high Q series Samsungs uh, encased with Gorilla Glass. So they're going to withhold the elements. It's a super solid TV. The back panel is solidly closed with insulation. Uh, yeah, you can't really beat the Samsung Terrace. Yep. If you want to add some, some videos, some, some movies outdoors, there's no reason to go projectors nowadays. Those are a thing of the past. Um, unless you do a budget one for the kids and do like a blow up screen for them if you want to have fun, but you're not going to spend much money on those. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then other considerations for install are going to be that when you're doing an outdoor system, we always recommend running conduit from speaker to speaker and from house to speaker. Uh, sometimes people or contractors will say, use this direct burial stuff. Here's a picture of a client that opted for direct burial. All those pieces are from a gopher's teeth. Gophers love, I think it's like gopher licorice, basically. Yeah. Um, so if you put it in conduit, you don't have to worry about that. You can pull additional wires later. Typically, we use about a minimum of an inch and a quarter conduit. You want to make sure that there are no hard 90s. You want sweeping 90s. Yes. And you normally want either your conduit to go up around where a speaker is and then back down. Or we use like these in-ground like boxes or coffee cans, basically. Yeah. Not an actual coffee can, but round box that you can just pull it in ground. So that's consideration. Yeah. Um, then the consideration, I guess, is just having enough soda and beach chairs and sunscreen. Well, a green... Lounge around and enjoy your new outdoor paradise. Yeah, maybe a green egg, uh, one of those smokers, a little barbecue oh, pit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just saw an ad for that. Yeah. 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 I haven't tried it, but... Um, but also, too, as we coordinate... It's good to have your, your audio video person, if you don't choose us, have them coordinate with whoever is doing the conduit, whether it be your contractor or landscaper. It's super important because information gets lost along the way. Even when you coordinate with them, stuff falls in between the cracks and gets forgotten about. So it's good to keep stay on top of that and keep the communication there. Absolutely. Uh, we always recommend using email back and forth. Lots of contractors don't seem to like email. And if you have an email trail between all parties, you know, client, you in this case, uh, business like ours and the contractor, that way hopefully nothing gets lost in translation. If it does, at least there's somebody to point the finger at and go, hey, you pick up the tab for this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we have a lot of experience and boots on the ground of doing these systems. So th th this is our experience. Got your boots on the ground. <laughs> Today I opted for flip flops for the you yeah, know, I need outdoor to, setup. I don't but. know if I can do installs with, with uh with sandals, I think. Be kind of problem. Yeah, there there is a, a a show on a Discovery Channel that there was a guy who who did construction in sandals at all times and refused to wear real shoes. Oh, guy just says no. <laughs> the guy have like just total caveman foot or ape foot. He did, yeah. <laughs> just stomping around barefoot, <laughs> kicking nails all day with no issue. Yeah, I'll, I'll insert a video <laughs> clip. It's yeah, it's hilarious. With ape foot. All right. Well. I, Thank you very much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe so we can continue to do this. And uh, we'll come up with another topic that we feel is important or necessary. We'll do it in our next video. Yep. Thanks, thanks for watching. Again.